All right, guys, this is 15.75 uh, uh, for week five. Uh, it says a block on a frictionless table is connected as shown in figure and the figure below to two springs having spring constants K1 and 2. Find an expression for the block's oscillation F in terms of the frequencies F1 and F2 at which it would oscillate if attached to either the first or second spring alone. Uh, so this is the system we have here uh, to mass on the end of, again, two springs uh, laid attached end to end. Uh, both with different spring constants. Uh, to make that more clear, I drew a picture right here uh, in which I labeled the connection point between the springs with this dot. I don't know if it wants to focus a bit better. Yeah, so this dot is kind of the point where the first spring ends and the second spring starts. And as you can see, they're attached uh, lengthwise to each other. Uh, and then this is the first spring, and this is the second spring. Uh, so we can also think of it as, uh, as a problem asks. We want the spring system as if it was only attached to either spring one or the same thing again with spring two. Uh, so to start, uh, again, what we want is an equation for each individual spring in terms of F1 and two. Uh, so to do that, we have to break the spring down into both of its individual components. Uh, from the total spring constant, uh, as you see here. Uh, so we know generally that frequency is equal to the spring constant, uh, specifically for this problem, the net spring constant over m, uh, all that square rooted. Uh, and we also know uh, this is just the same equation reorganized, but uh, we know that k is equal to frequency squared times m. And again, since we were looking for the frequency in terms of individual frequencies of each spring, uh, we're going to break k net down into uh, this term, which is uh, the spring constants multiplied in the numerator and the spring constants summed in the denominator. Uh, I would say this is the biggest pitfall for this problem. Uh, personally, I just got confused. Uh, I assumed k net would just be the sum of the spring constants, but it is in fact this ratio instead. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Taking that, we can substitute in uh, this term for k, f squared times m, uh, and that gives us this value for k net. Uh, so then from there, it's pretty much just algebra and rearranging uh, to know that f total is equal to uh, this f1 times f2 over the square root of f1 squared plus f2 squared. Uh, and again, we get that from combi uh, substituting into this equation uh, with this value for k net and this ident identity up here. Uh, so yeah, as far as uh, pitfalls, we went over that uh, the combining of the spring constants is a bit tricky. Uh, and then as far as context goes, this is just trying to... I actually thought this was pretty interesting. This is the first time I've done a problem like this where there were two springs laid end to end. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just me. Uh, but it got me to think about how you would isolate the problem uh, and think about how the system would oscillate if attached to only one of the springs, as opposed to if the springs were just attached together and their spring constants were combined as normal, uh, but instead we have this interesting identity right here. Uh, so yeah, that's about all it for this problem. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.